Colin Stratton from As Wood Turns. A bit ago, Sam Angelo turned a tube from Greenwood and asked me what, what I had done. Well, I have not done one for some time and not done a video on one, so I decided to go ahead and do a tube, especially since I had a lot of fresh, wet cherry that I could draw from. So in this video, I'm going to make this tube and let it warm. One significant consideration is that this tube is a cross-grain turning. You'd think that since it is tall and thin, that it would be an end-grain turning, but since I want to encourage warping and distortion, a cross-grain blank will work best. Since sapwood shrinks and warps more than heartwood, I want to cut my blank from one side of the log and on one side of the pith. I don't want the pith in my turning as heartwood on either side may balance out the shrinkage. So I'll move over from the pith and cut. Maybe on the next one I should try including even more of the sapwood. However, then I'd lose more of on the top and bottom of the tube to get the square ends. Now I'm mounting my timber much like a spindle but remembering that this is cross grain. Actually, this is much more like a very tall, skinny, bottomless bowl. I'll use a bowl gouge to rough out instead of a spindle roughing gouge, just in case. What a shower from wet wood! Then, cut a mounting tenon on one end. Next, I'm remounting into a chuck with that tenon, and quickly finish roughing and then refining the exterior of the cylinder. Next is to drill a center hole as deep as I can, like an end grain box. Now for hollowing. I'm starting with a small gouge, but don't get too far before I switch over to a square corner box scraper. For this application, the scraper works much better than a gouge. I'm practicing going straight in, starting near the center, then working out a little at a time. My problem is that I'm generating a lot of shavings that I have to remove frequently. Next I'm cutting a tenon on the open end, then reversing the tube so I can access the other end. However, I'm a bit nervous about so much length hanging out unsupported, so I'm bringing out my steady rest for insurance. Then I'm drilling out the center from this end. But here's where I got in trouble. My tenon broke. I should not have been surprised because of the green wood and no center support. But what to do? I broke away the rest of the tenon, then inserted the whole tube into the shark jaws. This gives thicker walls that should not break. I'll clean up the marks later. Then I used a 45 degree cone live center to center the tube. Problem mostly solved. I'm hoping the new turning center is close to the original, else I'll have problems later lining up the center hollowing. Back to hollowing first with a gouge, then with a scraper. The tool rest is higher for the scraper, so that the scraper is not as aggressive in the cut. Now, since the other end is a bit ragged from the tenon breaking, I'm reversing again so that I can clean up the end and maybe refine the tube. I want to clean up the exterior and perhaps make the walls just a little thinner, but how to mount a cylinder to the lathe? I'll take a short break now to turn plugs for both ends so I can mount it between centers again. I'm cleaning up the exterior 
then cutting a series of beads along the length. It is a challenge to cut so many small consecutive beads to be uniform. Hopefully, these will either hide or accentuate imperfections from the warping and thin down the wall just a little to enhance the warping. I'm not going to sand this tube. Now with the turning done, I took the uh, wood fresh from the lathe, put plastic wrap, this stuff, over the end of it, and uh, poked a hole in the end to let steam out, and then bunched it up closer to the end uh, so that the rest could dry. I think plastic packing tape would work much better than what I did. Put it in the microwave for a minute, let it dry, uh, pull it out, evaluate it, let it dry, put it back in the microwave for another minute on high, took it out, it had started to warp nicely, so I stopped. Problem with it getting too dry is that it then could catch fire, and my wife wouldn't like that in her kitchen. So here it is, tube, natural warp. Uh, I like it, I'll do some more. So Sam, here's my tube out of cherry with some nice warping and distortions. This cherry, Seems somewhat calm and stable. Next time, I would not cut a tenon on the open end of the tube. Instead, I will use the shark jaws to grip the exterior. The steady rests saved this project when the tenon failed. I'll use it again next time. And we'll see you again next week for another wood turning video. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and tell your friends. Always wear your full face shield. Goggles are not enough protection. Until next week, this is Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns. Let's keep on turning.